automatic time grouping, yes. Ah, oh, amazing. You can automatically put quarters. Ah, oh, this is good. This is going to save so much time. That's great. Hello everybody and welcome to my first impressions of Excel 2016. Uh, now I, w I wanted to just get it installed, have a look through, uh, see if I can spot a few cool features. Um, I've done that but my first impression is that it's done this. and uh, It's got rid of my 2013 installs which I kind of thought it might do but I thought it might give me an option or warn me or do anything other than just completely decide exactly how I wanted it installed. Uh, I like having multiple versions of Excel on my computer. I've even got 2003 on there because when you guys ask me questions, I like to be able to be in the same version as you. Uh, and so this is a big frustration for me and I'm going to have to see if I can figure out how I can reinstall 2013 and dual run 2013 and 2016. Um, it is a free upgrade so I can kind of see why they've done it but no, that's not okay. You can't just uninstall things on people's computers. Uh, to me they're different versions and I'm not happy with that. Um, I can't find them still installed they seem to have kind of disappeared uh not really sure where they've put them um so i'm gonna have to have a dig around and see if i can see if i can find those uh and get them reinstalled uh it's also automatically pinned them all to my bar which you know like if i didn't have the other ones pinned why would i want these ones pinned so first thing is unpin those so let's get into the good stuff. So this is a video that uh, has been released that gives a good overview of some of the new features. Now, um, let's just skip back to here, teamwork. So the first thing that they're really pushing, and it's at the top of the list of all the new features, is this ability to share uh, workbooks and working them at the same time. Uh, very, very, very similar to how uh, Google Docs works the thing so you can kind of see where people are typing you can invite people to it so they basically just copied, copied Google um, which is good but obviously now Google's kind of established the the market there so when you've got kind of a small group of like five to ten people maybe all working on one document then uh, and I know that I've got groups of people that I do this with and we'll use Google documents and you can all work on it at the same time um, quite how slick it will be when the compared to how it is in this video and let's let's pause it before we we jump on uh it's yet to see um and obviously if any of you have seen any of my shared workbook tutorials and stuff i just kind of say not to use them uh because they're god awful and atrocious but um i can see this being quite useful for like two or three people maybe working on a do kind of a document together uh, but then you'll also get the people misusing it and trying to get it, get to use lots of people uh, and it's, they're just going to break still I can't see that getting around it that's why Microsoft Access exists uh, and then Microsoft Access itself has limitations so that's why SQL servers exist uh, and the whole SQL uh, methodology but um, so I can't see this overtaking kind of active data objects and things like that uh, or SQL, um, but it, it's kind of a nice feature. It's, it's not original, and I wish they weren't selling it as their main thing because you know someone else is already doing it. Come up with your own thing. Um, it might we come across that I'm a bit salty? Obviously, I'm quite really excited about a new update uh, and get get into digging into new features. Um, and this ne next section on the video is probably where I'm more excited. Is some new charts. Uh, if you watch any of my graphs videos, you'll know that I love graphs, and anyone who works with me knows that I love graphs. Um, so let's see, they've got some samples of graphs here. Uh, they all look quite. That one looks quite interesting, and then this sunburst one they really particularly like. Uh, and so the, this video just gives a brief overview of how to do it. And when we come through after this little tutorial, uh, then you can see it's kind of like a pie chart, but it has bits split out. And stop, stop, stop! Come back. 
Uh, there we go. So you've got to split out into categories, and it's quite a nice way of viewing things. Um, how often it will come up, I don't know. Uh, generally, kind of these pie charts, people don't really get along that well with. Um, normally, in in this in these situations, uh, oh oh god, come on, Windows. I did, did, this install I'm not happy with. Um, right, the, normally people are just happy to look at those numbers, but it is a nice representative way of doing it. Um, but I always find, you know, if I send something like this to someone, they'll go, what are the numbers? And I'll go, there you go. And creating these new fancy graphs is a bit of a waste of time. Um, so let's carry on with that. Um, this new feature of taking out tables from Excel, so it looks like it's take, using the HTML tags uh, or XML tags. It's quite a nice feature. Um, as it goes through, it shows you how you can kind of import uh, from the web, which you could already do anyway, but now you can specifically choose elements within the web page um, and kind of refresh them from the elements themselves uh, and do a little bit of editing. So that seems like quite a nice feature. Um, it's something you've been able to do before anyway, but now it just makes it a little bit accessible to more people. Uh, so let's skip on from that. We don't need to see all of that. Uh, and then the next one, easier attachments. This is more of an Outlook uh, thing. Uh, it's interesting, um, and something to talk about here, it's interesting that this is a video around the upgrades to Office uh, and kind of most of the features are features that are in Excel, so I'm interested in that. But yeah, uh, Outlook doing some c cool attachment stuff, great. Um, because I always found it so difficult to attach files. Anyway, moving on. Uh, smart lookup. This looks like really useful. So this is probably in this video one of the best features for me. Um, and if I press play on it again, um, then uh, basically it, it's when you right click on something in um, in uh, I'm using Chrome. So when you like right click on something in Chrome and you can search Google for it, it's essentially doing that, but within your Excel documents. So. A long time coming uh, and then you've also got a search bar at the top where it means you don't have to go through your ribbon and try and find certain tools you can just type them in at the top uh, and then bring them up um kind of encourages it, it might not be the most efficient way i i'm a bit dubious about it because people aren't going to learn where things are and you can't click quite th quite as fast as you can when you know exactly where they are so it might actually slow a few people down but in the majority of cases when you're f trying to find new things um then that's going to be good let's let's get back on it a bit and let's see if we can see yeah it doesn't really like if it told you where they were on the ribbon i think i'd like it a lot more um maybe we'll be able to get that as an add-in or something but then you kind of would search for it once and then you'd know where it was on the ribbon and that would be really helpful let's br let's bring it up and see how it is let's bring up the new 2016 and let's actually play around with this it's just loading on my other screen uh, let's bring it across so loading addings uh, not a great deal different to the load time uh Right, first things first, automatic. You love your automatic updates, right? Uh, I guess I should view the agreement and accept. Uh, Excel was successfully activated. Okay. Right, default file types. Uh, choose the format you'd like to use as your default. Let's put all the features. Yeah, we don't want the open documents format. That's not what we're about. Um, cool, and it looks like everything's loading up on my other screen. Let me bring this over. So we've got the new Excel, uh, and for, kind of first impressions are that it's pretty much the same uh, interface as 2013, um, and I can't bring them up side by side because obviously they've uninstalled 2013 for me. Genius. Um, 
And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. You've got your ribbon. Uh, most of the things are in the same place. Uh, and I'm glad they've done this uh, because I don't think they need us to update this format. I think a lot of people are used to it. Uh, I think it works. I think it's tidy. Um, and you can access a lot of things very easily. Um, there's a few additional things. Uh, so in data, so you've got these new query things the way you can do queries from, from from the web and stuff like that um so that's all good uh we've got some forecasting stuff over here uh which is also kind of be cool um but yeah overall it's pretty much the same in here you've got the same uh if we go into the options it looks like it's pretty much all the same i imagine there's a few options in here but uh nothing overly Kind of crazy at the moment uh, obviously we can see we've got the smart lookup now on our right click menu which is nice um, and then here so let's do the example they did of crop so we can do crop tools which is not coming up because I'm assuming I haven't got an object uh, done so let's try something else let's try uh, count or auto sum right so yeah, I, I really wish that they'd made this so it showed you where on the ribbon it is rather than just giving it to you. Like, I know it's nice and I can just type them in, but I want to know where it is. Um, especially when it's things like, um, I haven't got it because I haven't got a pivot table. So say you've got a pivot table in there and you want to change the data. I, I can't necessarily remember what that command is. I think it's like change source data or something like that. So I could type a uh, source data in there but um, you might not necessarily know the name of it so it's good to learn where those things are but really nice feature it's not, it's not a bad thing to have it I just think it could be slightly better um, so let's move on that's this video let's close that off uh, let's go across this article on the office website um, and it just goes into a bit more detail around uh, what what the new features are so it gives us uh, the new uh, the new charts. So we've got tree map, sunburst, histogram, box and whisker, waterfall. Um, sunburst and tree map are my favourite ones, uh, but you know they'll all be useful in their own situations. And so it's nice to show off that you can do fancy graphs. Uh, uh, so get and transform queries. So I haven't read through all of this yet, um, but so let's go for it together. So uh, so this is the new query and thing, so I, I kind of need to get used to this a bit, but it looks like they made it a little bit e easier to import data from other places. It wasn't that difficult already, so I don't think this is a major change for me. Um, and if you've watched most of my videos, then it won't be a major change for you either, because you already know how to bring data in, and probably in more efficient ways than this is going to do anyway. Uh, One-click forecasting, I saw this and was like, yes! bring it on uh, my job is basically forecasting and I'm gonna do some videos on forecasting at some point soon um, but I need to play around with this a bit more um, but it's been extended to allow for things like exponential smoothing which I use quite a lot um, and then it's just one a one-click button so you, you select your data and you click it and it comes out with forecasts for you and so that's really useful. Um, there's a nifty little wizard that you can use. Uh, you can see here you've got some data which is the blue bit and then you've, it's automatically working out a forecast for you. And it also gives you these lower and upper confidence intervals which people are always very happy about. Because uh, then you can kind of say this is my forecast and they can go ooh that, that's a bit high or ooh that's a bit low and you can go okay then well this is, this is your other option. Um, and then I'm assuming you'll be able to do the same thing you can already with the, the forecast kind of trend lines and stuff. And you can take the formulas out and put them into your uh, back into your uh, columns to, to work things out. 3D maps, this looks quite cool. It's something you could already do uh, as part of kind of an imported tool, but now it's built into Excel. Um, and obviously these are really impressive kind of features to add into your documents. Uh, pivot table enhancements. Obviously, pivot table, one of the greatest features of Excel ever to exist, uh, which they kind of start off as well. It was known for its flexibility and powerful analysis experiences, which is true. It's a really useful tool. Um, 
And so what have they done? So automatic relationship t detection. Um, so, so it's kind of working out which tables need refreshing. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I quite like having control over it myself. Uh, I'm sure that you can turn it off and things. Uh, creating, editing, and deleting custom measures. Can be done with pivot tables to this. So sort of tell me you need to add additional calculations. That's cool. That sounds like they've added in a little bit easier. Uh, oh, field searching. I'm jumping ahead. Right, let's not jump ahead. Automatic time grouping. Yes. Ah, amazing. You can automatically put quarters. Ah, this is good. This is going to save so much time. That's great. Okay. Worth upgrading just for that one feature. Um, oh, man. I mean, some of the features they come up with just don't compare to one of them. Like, the ones they put at the top don't compare to some of the good ones. Uh, anyway, allow you to zoom in and out across the groupings of time and other hierarchical Berlin. Uh, that's basically the top. Yeah, it's a sub one of that. Uh, search in the people table. So, searching for fields. Love it. Thank you. Uh, smart renames. It gives the ability to rename tables and columns in your workbooks data model. Oh, that's interesting. So can I change it from the pivot table? I think that's quite a good idea. Uh, and multiple usable ability improvements. So uh, power the manual to wait at each of the because the workbook. Yeah, I don't imagine that. It's probably something you don't notice, but is actually quite helpful. Uh, some new slicers. Yeah, slicers are nice. But yeah, great. Uh, publish and share your analysis with power business information without being able to share it with the right people. Once you're finished preparing your balance, you can share it with a work group or clients through Power BI with just one button. So you can use to do it quickly, counter, construct internet reports and dashboards. Okay, I think I'll need to look into that more and do a bit of a separate video on it. Uh, quick shape formatting. Uh, yeah. Cool, doing some stuff with shapes. Uh, insert pictures with the correct orientation. Yeah. Uh, do things quickly with Tell Me. So this is, the, we've already talked about Tell Me. I'm not going to go into it much more. And Insights is kind of like you're searching Google. Um, I kind of wish you could just search Google from it. But anyway, um, the kind of things like I'm obsessed with Google instead of Microsoft. Um, and I just think that they've both got their areas which they're now probably better in. Um, and obviously, Google being a lot better for your kind of internet searches and search engine stuff. Um, so I kind of would rather kind of integrate the two of them together. But I obviously Windows wants to be the king of the internet, but, you know, not going to happen. Um, so simple sharing, yeah. Uh, that's nice. I'm sure it'll be good. New themes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, how do we look at these themes? They're probably in the options, aren't they? File options. Uh, da -da -da. General. And then ooh, we can go dark grey. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Um, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I love that they paid someone to do that. Like, literally no one cares. Um, right. And they probably paid someone quite a lot to do that. Um, data loss protection is a high-value enterprise feature as well-loved in Outlook. We're into the deal pieces to enable real-time scan of content based on set predefined policies and most common sensitive data types. Schools enable the sync. Yeah, I mean, that sounds useful. Um, I kind of... If you're in a situation where you're storing credit card numbers, social security numbers, or bank account numbers, you shouldn't be storing them in Excel. The end. Right. I work in the finance industry, and I would get absolutely eaten alive if I stored this information in Excel. So, not okay. No, no, no. Like, obviously, if it doesn't relate to anything, it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, uh, like things that are under data protection laws, like Excel isn't the right, right place for them. And I'm, I don't want 
any of you to kind of get traded into Microsoft. I think that's the case. Um, so overall, first impressions, looks like there's a few kind of cool features in there. Uh, I can see why it's a free update because I don't think I'd pay a massive amount of money for it. But that's how we're rolling now with Office 365 where we're putting a monthly subscription. Uh, you could kind of expect these updates to be free. Uh, and I wonder how often they're planning on putting new features in uh, going forwards because they've kind of got this opportunity now where they can drop features in quite easily. Um, and I kind of wish they hadn't called it um, 2016. Why not just call it 365? Uh, and then it's not like it's a new version uh, and it's just an update. And so I wouldn't get so frustrated about the switch from 2013 to 2016. Um, and then you can kind of drop new features in as and when you want. I think that's what I would have gone for. Like uh, if you use Google Docs, then they just update them whenever they fancy. They don't have to drop a whole new kind of year on it. Um, so I think with the new kind of internet age, that would be the way forward for, for Microsoft to go. I'm not really sure why they've gone with this business model. Um, yeah, I, do, I, don't, I don't really get it. Um, but one thing's for sure, it's frustrated me because my 2013's gone. Why? Hopefully it won't cause me too many problems because there aren't too many differences in formulas and things. So when you guys that are using 2013 ask me questions and I've only got 2016 to look at, I should still be able to work them out. Um, but yeah, first impressions. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how many of you have updated to 2016 and how you're finding it. Um, and uh, I'm also thinking about doing a video about features I'd like to see in the future. So anything that you think you'd like to see, uh, drop down in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what you have to say. So thanks for listening, and I hope to catch you soon.